Hi, and welcome back to Community Hotline. I'm Monica Weitzel, and we're here at Metro East Community Media in Gresham. And now with me tonight, I have Andrew Rolette, who is the warehouse manager and uh, the man who does it all at uh, <laughs> well, Birch you. Community <laughs> Services. Thanks for being here, Andrew. Well, thanks for having us. I understand you've been with uh, Birch for a very long time. Is that right? It has been quite a while. Because um, you, you're not that old. so uh, I know. Uh, I know. It's hard to believe. Yeah. Um, I actually started uh, being involved with Birch when I was six years old. I was very little. And <laughs> I'm guessing that you believe. had some other family members maybe participating, or did you just go and decide to volunteer on your own at age six? Uh, <laughs> yes, I drove right over there and was like, <laughs> I want to help out. No, um, my mom and Suzanne and Barry Birch, the mm -hmm. founders, um, were very close friends. And when Barry and Suzanne started, uh, they had a few loaves of bread in their townhouse, and we were one of the first families that needed help. And they called us over and they said... So you actually benefited from their services? Absolutely, wow, yeah. okay. Yeah, and they used to have us help out. We would sort bread and we'd... I mean, they just had it everywhere. It was on their couch and, and the front porch. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty interesting. Townhouse, you're not going to have that much, that much room to spread out. No, no. So it started out very small. Birch Community mm -hmm. Services was very small out of somebody's townhouse. It's grown significantly. So how long has yes. that been? It's uh, been over 20 years okay. now. And so tell me about Birch Community Services now. Tell me first about the, the food program, because that's how mm -hmm. it all started out. What, what are you doing now at Birch? So uh, Birch Community Services now has been serving local working poor families, um, like I said, for over 20 years. Um, and we help them uh, regain financial stability uh, through uh, food donations, uh, through clothing and education. Um, we have a very large warehouse, and it's, it's set up kind of like a grocery store. And families will come in and they'll shop. Now, obviously, they don't have to pay for anything. And with the money that they're saving, uh, they're able to put that towards different debts. Um, a lot of them have medical debt or they were laid off recently and they have to deal with the consequences of that. And so we want to come along and, and be able to help them with that. And so they get a lot mm. of food that way. So it's not just a handout. No, it is a, yeah. it is a hand up. A hand up, yeah. It's, and, and that makes perfect sense because you're a lot of times... People are in a cycle that it's hard to break out of, mm -hmm. but so often people are in a situation they've never been in before, especially with the economy, you know, kind oh, of yeah. tanking. I imagine there's a lot of people that all of a sudden are without a job mm -hmm. and, and don't know how to manage that. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So tell me about, you said, um, you said something about working families. Mm -hmm. So are, is it a requirement that the people be uh, working it is. It, it's a requirement that the people be working or actively looking for work. Okay. Um, we want people that can st uh, step up, and if they can't step up and, and really uh, join the program, because we're all about accountability. That's we great. want people that are going to get there, that want some help, that are willing to receive that help, and then that can also help themselves. And, and we do that through a lot of different programs mm -hmm. within uh, Birch Community Services Walls. Um, we have a finance class that everyone's required to take, mm. and that is a huge, huge marker of whether or not somebody's willing to really kind of take a responsibility and say, you know what, I want to make a difference in my own life, and I want to move forward, and right. we really want to be there to help them make those changes that are not going to just help them immediately, but help them in the long term. Long term, yeah. yeah, yeah. I like that because you, I like that you have that accountability factor in there because, mm -hmm. you know, you always hear people complaining about, you know, government programs where you're helping mm -hmm. people and, and how so many people are just living off the system and it's a cycle that's never broken. Mm -hmm. But here, you're asking them to break that cycle, we are. giving them the tools to do it. Yeah. So besides the financial class, which is required, mm -hmm. what other kinds of classes or workshops um, do you have to offer? Oh, we have lots of different classes. Some are really fun. We have chicken classes. We also have... Chicken uh, classes, meaning what? We teach people how to raise chickens. Oh, okay. So, I know. Yeah, so you can just have it's, a couple in your backyard. And yes, it's a lot of fun. Um, but also along with that, we have a lot of classes like Excel on your computer. Oh, okay. Because uh, we want you know, people to be able to not only uh, get a job, but we want to better them and be able to keep that job. Sure. You know, if someone was just laid off, well, now they need those skills to be able to Computer skills to are exactly. key. Yeah. yeah. What about um, if somebody's job hunting? I know there are services through, um, you know, the work source and places like that where people help you with resume building and all that kind of stuff. And do you have, do you refer people? If, if you don't offer classes that can help them, do you refer them to other agencies? Do you have mm -hmm. those kind of connections? Absolutely. The, the really fun part is not only do we have over 600 families on our program, but we also help anywhere between 40 and 60 nonprofits in the area. Oh, how does that work? So every morning before the families come in, we have, like I said, 40 to 60 uh, 
nonprofits that come in, and they'll shop just like a family. If we have any surplus of anything, we want to be able to help them. Because we know that if you're focused in and you're helping your specific demographic and not spread too thin, you're really going to be able to help them uh, in, in a way that is going to impact them uh, long term. That's cool. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's great. So, and so you have the, you help the nonprofits, mm -hmm. and then, um, okay, you have the chicken class. Yeah. Um, somebody mentioned that you do cooking classes. We do, yeah. We have um, some cooking classes. We'll have different people that volunteer that'll come in, and they'll teach the families how to, how to cook. And the best part about that is we only use product that we can find in the warehouse that they're shopping. See, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So things that, so somebody comes in and they go shopping. They mm -hmm. can look around. And so instead of just getting a box of food mm -hmm. that may have, peanut butter and your kid's allergic to peanuts, mm -hmm. or they might have, you know, beans and you don't eat beans for whatever reason, yeah. you you can go and shop for the things that you know your family will eat, or or if you don't know, if you've never cooked with them, you can mm -hmm. take a class and, and learn how to cook with them. Exactly. Is, is there a focus on cooking um, economically? There is a focus on cooking um, smart. So not only are we receiving product that you would expect, like canned goods or, or something like mm -hmm. that, but we also receive a lot of different um, uh, produce and, and things that are maybe a little more obscure, different cheeses and things mm -hmm. like that. And so we teach those families how to be able to utilize that and make uh, meals that their family really can uh, use throughout the week that is also very nutritious. Uh, oh, we don't right. want to just give people chips or something like yeah. that. We really yeah. want to be able to help yeah. them be healthy. Yeah. When you say produce, um, a lot of agencies that are able to help feed those who, who need it, and, and God bless them all, but mm -hmm. you know, there are a lot of them who um, mostly give out canned or you know, packaged goods. Where do you get your produce from? So there are a number of different sources. We have a, a bunch of different uh, nonprofits in the area that give us uh, produce. We also have a lot of donors that give us produce. But something that's really unique about Birch Community Services is that we have a bunch of community gardens that we started up. Oh, yeah. you started them. Yeah. We absolutely did. Oh. Yeah, And so our families actually go out and they'll learn how to garden because we have teachers at these gardens. So our families will go out, they'll learn how to garden, and then they bring the produce back to the warehouse so that everybody gets a little bit of it. Oh, that's and great. It's, oh, it's wonderful. And then if they do have a place where they can garden, or maybe mm -hmm. even an apartment garden, because I know that's sort of mm -hmm. getting to be a, a big deal now, they, they can take that home and have their own little garden too. Yeah, it, it's so much fun. And what's really great is when you go out there and you watch these, their families are out there and they're volunteering, and they have their kids out there, and their kids, you know, have never really involved uh, themselves in any kind of gardening. Uh -huh. And they get to, wow, mom, this is what a carrot looks yeah. like? It didn't come from a store? This is incredible, yeah. wow. I know, I was talking to my daughter not very long ago, and one of her favorite memories was going over to grandma's house, because grandma had a garden, and they remember pulling the carrots out of the ground by those leafy stems and pretending they were Bugs Bunny, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> eating, mm -hmm. eating the carrots. And, you know, and kids love that stuff. And, yeah, and it, it makes the food real and, and you know, knowing where it comes from is, is important. But also getting those kids involved in the volunteering that young Absolutely. is a really a great thing, I think. Yeah. Obviously, you started very young. I did. So you now work for Birch Community I Services. I do. I have for about four years now. And as warehouse manager, what does that mean? You just, you're just in charge of uh, this goes there and you put that over there and... Oh, uh, well, you know, it's a little actually, more than that, maybe? It, it is a little bit more of that, but the, the best part about it is that Birch, it's a team effort. We have five full-time employees, mm -hmm. but we also have um, last year we we had thirty thousand hours of volunteer uh, wow. work. Yeah, so, so without do you have that, to manage a lot of that. Then? Absolutely. Oh wow! <laughs> Every single day we have volunteers that are coming in that help out, and um, we go around and, and delegate those volunteers to be able to kind of help each other in this community to be able to uh, keep things running smoothly and, and inexpensively. So, nice. I think you ha we have a short video clip that mm -hmm. um, that I want to show that I, that I have not seen yet. So I'm gonna I'm gonna oh. watch it with, with the rest of the audience here. <laughs> but I think it was a uh, was it a news? Uh, yeah, it, this is actually really exciting. Um, we recently uh, had NBC Nightline News uh, come out for three oh, days. I remember that. Yep. I read about that in the paper. Yeah. For three days they came out and they videotaped every I mean every move we did, and then they shot it uh, nationally. That's great. That's it really a great support. Well, let's take a look at that now. Okay. Wonderful. All right. With so many Americans struggling to make ends meet, food banks across this country, as you may know, have been stretched to the limit. But Portland, Oregon has what might be a new model for neighbors helping each other. In order to get, you also have to give, and it's a formulation that appears to be working well. Our report tonight from NBC's Lee Cowan. Sometimes a grocery store is more than just a place to shop. At Birch Community Services, it's a place to survive. 
it's helped feed my family. The average family who shops here has five kids and earns just $40,000 a year. But every item, from the bread to the boots, okay. is free. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I can't imagine anything more fulfilling than getting free stuff and giving it away. How are you doing? Barry and his wife Suzanne run Birch Community Services. Their goal is to help the working poor. But while the food and the clothes are all free, there's still a price to pay. People step up or step out. It's that simple. That means no free lunch. To shop here, families pay $50 a month for a membership, sort of like Costco. They have to volunteer in the warehouse twice a month. Then let's dive right into it. And they have homework. Families are required to attend at least one home finance class as well. And there are 600 other families just like them, getting a hand up, not a hand out. It is a remarkable story of success, made even more remarkable by the fact that it was born of personal failure. Uh, when I was 40, I lost everything I had. It was actually eating out of a dumpster. Years of alcoholism and gambling had taken their toll. A handout wouldn't have helped. Accountability did, and a business model was born. Bless you. <laughs> This program is probably 90% about people and 10% about food, and uh, most of the other programs are the reverse. It's not for everybody. Tough love hurts sometimes, but it can't be quite as tough as the times. Lee Cowan, NBC News, Portland. Wow. Yeah. That was great. Mm -hmm. Great exposure, too. But I love the accountability factor. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's a huge thing, and that really does set you apart from a lot of organizations. It really does. Tell me... Um, I, as long as you've been around, you've probably seen this program and this organization change some lives. Can you give me any little stories, anecdotes, or anything about Absolutely. how people have been affected? Um, well, if, if you don't mind, I, I have a personal story. Sure, that's, um, that's even better. Yeah, I, you know, as I said, I started out um, on the program with my family. Mm -hmm. uh, we were struggling. My dad had been laid off. And uh, Suzanne and Barry created this environment where we were able to get through until he got work again. And that was wonderful. And then I went off and, you know, I did high school and everything else. And I started school and college. And next thing I know, I was on the program. I had broken my leg without insurance and Ooh. had major surgery on it and was oh, in over my head in debt. Yeah. And, uh, and I was really just struggling, trying to figure out what to do. And Barry and Suzanne said, you know what? Come on by. We want to be able to help you out. We want to teach you how to pay off that debt and stay out of debt. And I can say I've done that. You are a success story right oh, there. Thank you. It's because of them. It, that, that's great. Well, they're obviously really caring and very special people. Mm -hmm. So, um, and they've been doing it for a long time now. So, what does the future hold for Bir Birch? Um, you know, would you, do you have? How do you support yourself? Is it from donations um, or support the organization mm -hmm. from donations? Or do you have grants? Do you uh, what? Well, a little bit of, of everything, actually. Mm -hmm. um, we are self-sustained, so everybody that's on the program pays fifty dollars a month, and that pays our, our overhead, you know, electricity, great. refrigeration, yeah. that kind of thing. None of our product, um, we don't buy any of it. Every bit of it is donated. Mm. So, um, you know, if we get in a pallet of milk, family gets a pallet of milk. It's wonderful. Um, we also, and this is really exciting. Last year, we did our first replication seminar. Ever since, ever since we were on national TV, people have been calling us and saying, oh. we really want to do what you're doing in our city. How can we do that? How great to be the model for, <laughs> for the rest of the country. Yeah, and, and we never knew that that would happen. You know, we just, Barry and Suzanne and all of us, we just wanted to help people. And now we're able to do this replication seminar. We're going to have another one coming up. And it's so other be all places over. around the country. Yeah, oh. there's... There's actually um, a place called Hope Station that's in Salem that um, was uh, a member that wanted to start the same thing, and, and now it's all over the country. Yeah, Isn't it's that great? really exciting. Well, it's something to be proud of, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you anticipate staying there? Yes, absolutely. I'm going to be here for the long run. Yeah. yeah you're not going to see me going anywhere. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that, Andrew. Um, before um, I let you go here, mm -hmm. I, I just want to make sure I know that the, the website is uh, www.birchcommunityservices.org. Mm -hmm. If people are interested in volunteering, donating, um, can, can people attend workshops and classes even if they are not part of the program or do they become part of the program and then they're able to? Part of the program and then, okay. and then they can take part. Okay. We, if you want to be involved, go to the website and then we have all the different links that you could possibly need to be able to really get involved and possibly donate or, or just don donate your time and volunteer. Or if you need the help yourself or know of somebody else who does. Mm -hmm. 
and are willing to uh, actually put some effort into it and be accountable for, for what you get there, mm -hmm. then, then contact you or contact yeah. Burge yeah. Community Services. Absolutely. That's great. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Well, thank you for yeah, having us. It's my pleasure. And thanks for watching this episode of Community Hotline. We had a couple of great guests here tonight, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I'm Monica Weitzel. We'll see you next week.